give you the Lord of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many know that God is faithful? Thank you.
Shout this morning, Hallelujah! Oh, okay. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, just open your lungs this morning and say Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. You know, as the the band was playing, I felt like doing something, like we should do something nice for them, and I know that. <laughs> I know, yes, they deserve it. Okay, Pastor Zandi always says, Ninga binemon. Let's just clap and celebrate them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so um, we, we have a mom, we can sit for a, a moment. We have a mom in soul and spirit who loves making people's dreams come true. So that word is like being in fuma. Because <laughs> she's so going to make sure it happens. But I just want us, you know, monetary things, physical things are good to have. Ne? When you are given money, you are happy. But it's what is of substance is eternal things. So I'd like for us just to stand on our feet and just speak a blessing upon their lives. Speak marriage upon their lives. Speak open doors upon their lives. I, I don't know who needs to get married, but I just felt like... We must be releasing marriages this morning. <laughs> okay, Paul is like, no, this one. But honestly speaking, they've served us faithfully for years. And um, it's one thing to play, but it's another thing to catch the spirit of the house and flow with the spirit of the house. So can we just stand up on our feet and begin to speak and shift things in their lives. Thank you, Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Labranda kasande, lebranda kasata, liya mande lele keshaya. 
I speak a blessing upon Stan and his family, oh God. Thank you, Father. That everything that he touches is blessed, oh God. Thank you for increase in his life, oh Father, in his family, in his ministry, Jehovah. Father, Lord, this morning we release a blessing upon Paul. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of empowerment. Thank you, Lord, that their name shall be known. Thank you for open doors upon their lives, oh God. Thank you, Father, that they are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, that as they play, deliverance comes upon families. Come on, let's bless them this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you anoint their footsteps. They are led by you. They can hear your voice behind them saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it, O God. We give you praise that the angel of this house walks with them, envelops them, protects them, covers them. Father Kelly Abrasta La Kasaya, and it's bringing good things into their lives, oh God. Thank you that you answer the prayers of their hearts, what they've been praying for, what they've been crying for. Lord, thank you that through the anointing and the mentor that is upon this house, Thank you that they are being answered in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'd also like to celebrate Pastor Sbo. Well, I think I'm biased because I really like him. But I've never seen someone who just alone, no pecking, no nothing. And <laughs> from glory to glory. He's amazing. He's, he's amazing. He's truly amazing. Amen. May we be seated um, for a few minutes in his presence. We, we have a, a power-packed program this morning. And um, as we were worshiping, I felt like, you know, when we have so many ministers, like we have three ministers this morning that will be speaking the word to us. When we have so many ministers, it's easy to be like, okay, number one, number two, number three. But I wanted to challenge us this morning. Can you place a demand on the anointing? Like ask the Holy Spirit, what does this speaker have for me? Because I remember last year that as we were doing fire conference, um, Pastor Kaya spoke about an unstable man who wavers between two opinions. And he said that man is unstable in all his ways. That was what he was caring for me. And from that time onwards, I stopped, you know, being a prophet and not really being one. And then one day being one. Because I was like, oh my goodness, I'm destroying my life. I need to choose a side. So each speaker this morning has not been selected by the hand of man. They've been selected by the hand of God for us. And we are here because we are the people that need to hear and need to benefit from the grace that they are carrying this morning. So don't, don't come to church because crowds, crowds will make you miss out. God is not about crowds. God is about individuals and hearts that are open. So I'm challenging us this morning to just open our hearts for God and say, there's this one who's speaking, Pastor Sam is speaking, what does he have for me? Other people might, but what does he have for me? Amen. And uh, before we, we continue, I'd like to honor the men and women of God that are in this place. Okay. I'm sorry if I miss your name, but I can see Apostle Bipim Shongo and Prophet Bize Tim Shongo from Emmanuel Zoe. We have um, Apostle Wanda Mieni and Pastor Giwo Dumo from EZM Nguavuma. And then... <laughs> Yes, and Pastor Joe Dumanga in Balobas Susa Wotumo, like Telen Brandy Moon. And then we have, um, okay, I have a list here, but it doesn't have all, all the names. So I'm just, I, we also have Pastor Tandega Lamini from LGTG. And then um, we have Pastor Musamieni 
from um, EZM Nguavuma. And, um, okay, the name will come to me. I'll leave it alone and I'll do it later. Um, so we also have our speakers for the conference, the men, that God, the men and women of God that God has anointed for us. We have Pastor Kayam Tetwa. We have Pastor Te Apostle Temba Manana. We have Pastor Falme Amani. We have um, Apostle and Pastor Zandi. We have uh, Pastor Sam and Pastor Tembi Masego. Amen. We are really, really blessed. We also have Apostle Phil and Daba. She's not here this morning. And um, I'd like for us to honor our parents. I'm ashamed. I apologize, woman of God. I didn't see you walk in. I'd like for us to honor our parents, um, the Apostle and Pastor Zandi. Such loving parents. I know they don't love it when we do this, but such loving parents. But the one thing that I love about them is how they push us forward. You know, this is a house where we are just pushed forward. And you don't have to perfect it to stand here or to stand anywhere where they assign you to. They see you, they call you out, and immediately they walk with you according to who you are. Can we stand on our feet and celebrate the gift that they are to us this morning? We really praise God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. you may be seated. I also want to thank God for giving us such awesome brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, we have amazing people that we walk with because of them. Um, I, I was thinking this morning when Pastor Zandi said, your program directing, I remember Pastor Steer used to laugh at me and say, hey, Utolite and I'm fun. And Utolite and I'm fun. It's not this year. It's not this year. It's such an honor to have you again. Um, men of God in the conference, it's so beautiful with your beautiful wife. We love you very much. Amen. So at this point in time, I just um, would like to invite our mom this morning to come and help us um, introduce the speaker that will be ministering to us. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, greeting saints in the name of Jesus. You are incredible people. Thank you for loving God enough to not do other things and just takes time aside to be here this morning. Amen. Church would look very different if you were not here. So um, please look at your neighbor for me and say thank you for being here. You look beautiful. Say your presence here brings color to this house. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I've stood up this morning to basically echo the words of uh, Pastor Nonchantla, Prophet Nonchantla, um, to say you are all welcome and we have special honor for the men and women of God who are here. In a special way, I just want to acknowledge and celebrate Apostle Fihil and Daba, all the way from Guanongoma, who is with us. <laughs> eh, the sword and spirit way. We love you, Ma. We, we can't wait. We know that this house is going to rip. Amen. And then, um, the other days that I want to introduce and, and welcome is Apostle Tema Manana, who doesn't need introduction. Can we love on him? Apostle Temba has been walking with us for many, many years. For whatever reason, uh, I, I, I just... I choose to lean on him a little more than I should. So I, I had a week of, I know it always sounds like, man, now in my weeks of drama and many other afflictions of the righteous. It just proves that I'm more, okay, let's leave it. Um, but I was having one of those weeks and I wasn't talking to anyone and I wasn't taking calls and I was having quite a bit of a difficult time. And the only call that I then took, this is a while back, was his call. He's just unfortunate like that, that I feel very safe with him. Safe just not being a pastor, not being a mom, not being a proper human being. I can, I can show sides that no one should show to him. And I'm just grateful to have you in my life, um, Apostle Temba. Amen. So God has blessed the Sword and Spirit family. And I, I want to introduce our speaker this morning this way because of what God did in last night's service. The Sword and Spirit family has other family in Pretoria. Um, 
the church that these special people pastor is called Saints Family Church. It was actually born in February and already is making us look like which God do you serve and why is every, he a respecter of persons? Because of the amazing things that God is doing in their lives. Um, we are so blessed in doing ministry in Emalatheni. We, our paths crossed and we fell in love immediately and we've done ministry in their church and we've done a lot of life together. We've even been on holiday together, a random holiday. They were like, we well, here's your anniversary. Or oh, maybe let's just go to Durban. We'll fly you. Do you want your kids to come? We'll fly them too. So that's why we love them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We were going to love them whichever way because we're spiritual people. Okay. The Masegos are in the house. Pastor Sam and Pastor Tembi Masego. Please give them a big God bless you. Come on, can we stand to our feet and just honor and celebrate these gifts? As I read his profile, he is then going to step forward to minister to us. Sam Masego is a legal professional, entrepreneur, sports enthusiast, and the founding pastor of Saints Family Church. He has served as a public prosecutor for the state in both the district and regional criminal courts. And in 1997, he was promoted to magistrate. So we have a magistrate ministering to us today where he served in the criminal and civil courts of the Republic of South Africa. He has a qualification in social context in judicial decision making from the illustrious University of Cape Town. So we also have a brainiac and genius in the house. Furthermore, he holds an appointment as a representative of employers in disciplinary hearings from the Justice College as well as an advanced law of contract and public international law from UNISA. Um, he is the founding pastor of Saints Family Church together with his beautiful wife and they are blessed with three children, two boys and one girl and I remember the boy because he, he likes a person that I know. So I won't mention all the names because if I get one wrong, then it's going to be problematic. But they are family people and they are very humble servants of the Lord. And we are so open and ready to receive what God has deposited in them for us. Let's put our hands together one more time as he takes the stage. be seated. Good morning, saints. What an honor uh, to be part of this uh, conference, the Superman conference. I just want to express our heartfelt gratitude for this invitation to Apostle Peggy and Pastor Zandi Twala of Sword and Spirit Ministries, whom we came to divinely being connected to them uh, just about a year and two months ago. I want to bring greetings uh, from the Saints Family Church in Pretoria. I am here with my wife, Tembi, as they've announced, and also with a dear sister from our church, Lerato Lidija. Can we just appreciate her? She just came to be with us. And uh, thank you so much, Lerato. I want to also acknowledge and give honor to fellow pastors and who are guests and other pastors who may be here this morning. And I must say, this has been such an iron sharpening, iron moment for me. But also in the words of the Apostle Paul, he says, we are able to comprehend with the saints the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of the love of God with the saints. In other words, the eye cannot say to the ear, I do not need you. The Bible says, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? So God has divinely uh, ordered and placed things in his body that no church, no believer can have it all together all by himself. And therefore, I am very grateful to be here because I've been so enriched and I'm still getting enriched with all the teachings and uh, I must say, coming in and sitting through the sessions has helped me to understand the angle and also the direction 
which I believe would have me to go this morning. Uh, like I said, I think to some of the pastors yesterday, Paul says, I've planted. Then he said, Apollos watered. And he said, God gave the increase. So if I came to this conference ready to even excavate, then before even the planting, if we go to the book of Hosea, he says, uh, you know, uh, he, said, uh, he said, you must dig up your fallow ground. So somebody has already done the digging up. Somebody has done the excavation. Somebody has taken out the weeds. Somebody has already planted. And so I want to be grateful that as I was listening, I was beginning to realize that, okay, I don't need to come with a pick because somebody has done that. So I just placed the pick on the side in my message. Somebody has done also the taking out of the weeds. So somebody has already done that. And so in a sense, I'm not going to go into explaining what sons are. It has been so thoroughly explained. I mean, Bishop Kaya yesterday did such a sterling work and Bishop Mike Kramba, yes, amen, uh, also did a good job and uh, Pastor Mashazi here. So as I was listening and I said yesterday, it was such a good benefit to come as the conference started because then you're able to follow through. That, okay, somebody has done the plastering, somebody has done the painting, I can come with the finishes. So my job gets easier as I listen. So I wish they changed me and put me much longer in the program. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know the ones that, that, that do the finishing. I mean, they come when it's all nice. Praise the Lord. Some people have done all the messy work and all of that. So I'm just grateful. So I'm, I'm, I'm here being aware that the plane has already taxied. It's already gone through the runway. We are already on board maybe 35,000 feet above sea level. So I come like that air hostess is going to ask you chicken or beef, you know. <laughs> but well, if you're in business class, then they give you the menu. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm going to take off from where I believe my dear brother Kaya said yesterday in the book of Galatians chapter number four. And then I'm going to go into the acts of the sons. Praise the Lord. So I think I've laid out the foundation of outline what I am thinking and, and what has happened here. So I'm going to go on the assumption or the presumption that at least we understand what has been done in building our lives. Now in Galatians chapter number four, uh, in verse number one, Paul, and this is the scripture that was alluded to yesterday, Paul says in Galatians chapter number four, in verse number one, now I think I must just uh, get used to using the screen at the back and then it will make my job easier. Is that correct? Praise the Lord. In Galatians 4 verse number 1, Paul speaks about the whole distinction between the heir and the son. He says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all. Can you imagine? He says he's an heir. He does not differ at all from a child, from a slave rather, as long as he remains a child, which suggests to us that for us to walk in sonship necessitates a growth and a maturity. So because, he says, as long as he's a child, you know, it, it does not differ at all from a slave, though he's a master of all. Now, I think a lot of work has already been laid in helping us understand that we are all sons. And now we are able to see from this scripture that Paul is telling us that in order to, for us to become sons, it necessitates that we must throw every childish wood away. Now, as we were listening yesterday to the distinction between the two sons of the father in the book of Luke chapter number 15, you will notice that both of them could not even understand the heart of their father. The first one, when after he messed up, he went back home with an idea that he's a slave. Actually, he wanted to be made a slave. He wanted to be demoted. He says, I'll go to my father. I'll say, you know what? Treat me like one of your servants. That was his mindset. And may I say this? The title of my message this morning is The Mindset of a Son. Yeah. 
developing the mindset of a son. Because here, when we read this scripture, it helps us understand that, you know, the difference between a believer who will act as a son and the one who will act as a slave, it's all about their mindset. Because the elder brother, remember what he said. He said, all these years I've been with you. He says, I've been slaving. He said, you did not even give me a goat. But then when you go back to that parable, and I'm just going to, I'm just using this just to take off in Luke chapter number 15. When I read it, as we were listening yesterday, the elder brother, based on the Levitical order, was that when the father was dividing their estate, he must have received a double portion. But he could not access it, he could not execute it, he could not enjoy it because his mindset was that all I'm supposed to do was just to slave. Do you know this is the situation in the body of Christ today? That we could be sitting here and you have a mindset that you need to do something instead of executing what God has given to you. Because when I look at Luke chapter number 16, in Luke chapter number 15, the Bible tells us that the father actually divided the inheritance to them. It was the younger one who asked, but the father divided it to them. Now, when you understand the Levitical order, is that when a father divides his inheritance, the elder one would have received the double portion. And how many sons are sitting in the house today? They are not able to execute what God has given to them because they've got a mindset that they've got to do something when God has done everything. Hallelujah. He divided it to them. And now I want to just pick it up from there to understand that because we are sons, in Galatians 4 verse number 6 to verse number 7, the Bible says he sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave. Say, I'm no longer a slave, but a son. So if I am a son, then I am an heir. If I'm a son, then I am an heir. This is where I want to take it, and then I'm going to deal with characters of those who are sons. So if I'm a son, the word son is intrinsically linked to somebody who is an heir, in Dalifa. In other words, if I understand that I'm an heir, when I'm given the word of God, I approach it as not a book of do's and don'ts but as a will in which I want to know what's mine in here. Because the fact that you speak and the fact that you develop the mindset that you are an heir means that when you approach God's word, you've got to approach it with the... I mean, if somebody dies and he has made a will, who is a testator and he has bequeathed stuff to you in a will, when you get to a will... You, when they open it to you, you go to a lawyer, you want to know, what's in it for me here? Oh, I've bequeathed a farm of so many hectares to you. I've bequeathed this and that to you. You want to know what is yours so that you can execute it. So you and I are actually supposed to be executing the things that God has already bequeathed to us. Hallelujah. Now, I want to deal with this uh, quite quickly. So, we are joined as with Christ. Let's go to the book of Romans. I cannot just wait to get to the acts of sons themselves and how God just does it. There are patterns in scripture. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter number 8, I want to deal with this in verse number 17. Romans 8, verse number 17. The Bible says, let me start from verse number 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then as. If children, then as. In other words, by being a child of God automatically upgrades you to become an heir. And I said an heir's work is to what? Is to execute. And if I'm an heir, I want to know what is in the will for me. Now, notice something here. It says, then as, and then it says, as of God. That should make us sit and think about it deeply the whole day. You're not an heir of Bill Gates. You're not an heir of Warren Buffett. You are an heir of God. 
It says heirs of God, and not only that, it says joint heirs with Christ. Now, it was spoken about that yesterday. So if I'm a joint heir with Christ, if I'm a joint heir with Jesus, that means everything that Jesus earns, I earn. Now, if you look at that word joint heir, it's two words in English, but in the Greek, it's actually one word. That means Jesus is given what you inherit. It's what we call an undivided share. In other words, when Jesus is given this 500 mil bottle of water, you drink with him the same amount of drops. In other words, you cannot divide and say you take 250. No, no, no. It's an undivided. I say it is an undivided because that word joint A in English is two words. But joint A is the same word that Peter uses in 1 Peter 3 verse 7. It says, likewise, you husbands dwell with your wives with understanding. Understanding that they are a weaker vessel. Recognizing that we are heirs together. Heirs together. Again, two words. But in the Greek, that word is one word. You are joined heirs. In other words, when I get married to my wife, I cannot say this is my car, that is her car. No. In other words, my car is her car. She doesn't have a 60%, a 40%. No, 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 no. That's now when you are dividing it. In other words, she inherits and enjoys 100% of the benefit I enjoy. Now think about what Jesus enjoys. No, I say think about what Jesus enjoys because I'm going to take you to the book of Hebrews so that you will understand how we have been short changing ourselves through our thinking, through a wrong perception, just like that boy said, I'll go back to my father and say, make me one of your hired servants. Make me a say, slave. That's that word, slave. That's the word doulos. That's the word that, you know what he said? Because even when he was going back home, he had a mindset of being demoted. You know why? Because he messed up. How many people are sitting here this morning and you think because of something that you have done that God has got something against you and therefore when you approach God, you approach him from the fact that, Lord, I messed up. No, Lord, if you can just give me some crumbs when God says you deserve it all. Bob says it was God in Christ, not imputing man's trespasses against them, but reconciling the world to himself and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Or say to your neighbor, you deserve it all. We have a wrong mindset. We have a wrong mindset. We tend to think that God has given. I tell you, this wrong mindset was started by the devil in the Garden of Eden. He came and planted that thought of deception that, you know what? If you eat, you will be like him when they were already like him. Mindset. It says, as of God, joint as with Christ. Hallelujah. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Now, let me see what Jesus inherits. Praise the Lord. When we go to the book of Hebrews chapter number one, in verse number two, Hebrews chapter number one, if she can time me so that I don't go beyond the two-hour mark, praise the Lord. <laughs> in Hebrews chapter number one, verse number two, we are going to see here what is in the will for us. If I want to see what's in the will for us, I don't have to look for my own will because my will may be distorted by the way I've been taught. But let me check what Jesus inherits because I'm a joint heir with him. So I may not understand what belongs to me because sometimes, and maybe let me run a little bit ahead of myself, as believers, we are, you see, a true son. Once you, 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 you develop the mindset of a son, your prayer life changes. We stop praying and user prayers. God bless me with a house. God bless me with a car. When God says, I want you to own homes. <laughs> you said it right, Pastor Zandi. We are, it's about access. Now, now you'll see here how we have been shortchanging ourselves. How we have been sabotaging ourselves. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Remember the Bible says, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. So I may not know what I'm inheriting, but if I hold on to him and I walk with him and I allow him to, to, his spirit to be in me, I just follow. 
You see, when we were coming here for the first time, I did not even know. In fact, the navigation told us that the place is on the left. But because you were following someone, I forget about what this thing is telling me and follow the one who goes to the place. So I may not know. I did not know this place. It was my first time here. But as long as I hold on to him, he's going to lead me to the right place. Look at this. In, in Hebrews 1, it says, God who at various times and in, in ways past, verse number 1, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, by spoken to us by who what? His son, whom he has what? Appointed and what? An heir of what? An heir of all things through whom he also made the world. So, Jesus inherits everything. He's an heir of what? Of all things. So when I read God's word, I must approach it with a mindset that I'm an heir. And that's why when Paul was addressing the elders of Ephesus in a place called Miletus, just outside, look at what he said. He carries this whole idea of a son becoming an heir. In Acts chapter number 20, in verse number 32, look what he said. And I love the word that he uses it here. He carries the same idea of an heir. In Acts 20, verse number 32, he says, So now, brethren, I commend you. The word commend, it's actually an accounting term. It means I deposit you. You know when you make a deposit, somebody must make a withdrawal. It's dangerous to say you don't have money when somebody has deposited money in your account. So, so Paul has already, let me say this, Pastor Luan, a deposit has already been made. So you and I are here to make a withdrawal. Have you noticed when somebody sends you money by cash send or e-wallet, you must know how much is there. Because if somebody has sent you 10,000 rents and you withdraw 500, you shall change yourself. So I want to know how much has been deposited so that I can make the whole withdrawal. I'm not leaving this conference with half measures. I want it all. He says, I commend you. I deposit you to what? To God. To, I commend you to what? To God. And to the what? The word of his grace. Now, it's got the dual benefits. Let's read it together. Which is what? Able to build you up. That's the first benefit. And the second one to what? To give you. Among the, is to give you an inheritance. So, all I need to do is to make a withdrawal of God's word this year, 2023. As long as I make the withdrawal of God's word and I know Christ inherits everything, I will inherit what he inherits. But because there is a deposit, all I need to do is just to make sure that I must make a daily withdrawal. Do you know sometimes when we've got cards here in the bank, they say there's a daily limit? No, no, no. When we come to God's word, there is an unlimited withdrawal. It depends on your hunger and your thirst. The Bible says, blessed are they that thirst and hunger after righteousness because they shall be what? Feel. So if I am hungry, that means it's not Jesus' problem. It's not Paul's problem there. It's my problem because I'm not making the necessary withdrawals. That's why the psalmist says, Lord, our Days, so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. My prayer this year, after the Superman conference, let's not lose a day. Let's not lose our daily withdrawals. So each day you must ask yourself, did you make a daily withdrawal? Because your daily withdrawal, there is the benefit. He says, I deposit you to God. And to the word of his grace, which is able to what? Oh, so that means I'm going to be reared up. I'm building, I'm going to be constructed in righteousness. I'm going to be constructed in holiness. I'm going to be constructed in understanding the truths of God's word. In other, he said, the, the word to, to build you up is the same word that he uses, that Jude uses. He said, you know, the, he, he says, be built up in your most holy faith. So the word of God, what does it do? It builds us up. It constructs us. We become a superstructure. Bible says, praying in the Holy Spirit, building yourself up. 
That's one of the benefits of praying in tongues. We are constructing ourselves to be a superstructure. Now, if we've got the, the top structures like the Burj Al Arab in Dubai, that means it depends how high you want to build. They made a decision that they want to build the tallest skyscraper there, and they build it, and everybody goes there, and it's like we watch and say, wow. You know why? Because they made a decision. Child of God, you can de design yourself to be a one-story bungalow, or you can build higher, depending on your hunger. The word is able to what? To build, and not only that, as you get built up, at the same time, it gives you what? You in, from the word inheritance, you get the word heir. You see the word heir there? The heir, what does it do? He inherits. And the heir also executes. <sighs> he says, I deposit you. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine how many of us, some of us, people have made deposits. I remember there was a sister who was having a birthday in our church. I made a deposit just as a birthday present. And then after a while, I went on my account and I checked under cash send. I realized that a month after I made that deposit, she did not withdraw it. And I can imagine how many days maybe she said, oh, I don't have fuel money. There was something that was deposited, but there was no withdrawal. How many things that God has deposited? The healing, the peace, the provision, and we go about like slaves. Hallelujah. How many? How many? So don't forget that. So this year, I'm going to make daily withdrawals. Have you noted something when you go to ATMs? That the part that leaks withdrawal, it's faded out. <laughs> because that's where a lot of people go to. You know why? It suggests that those people, they know somebody made a deposit. And some of them, they put withdrawal and then says insufficient funds. But they just keep going again. And those slips keep coming out. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody this morning? <sighs> I'm going to talk about sons. I'm going to leave the rest there. Amen, Dazalwan. What kind of sons are we supposed to be? Acts chapter 4. What kind of sons are we going to be? I'm going to pick up one example in the New Testament and one in the Old. And since it has been explained that son is not a gender term, and then I'm going to add a cherry on top, put a lady who also did the acts of the sons. Because the word son is not a gender term. Am I right? So I'm going to pick one, and then I'm going to sit down. Praise the Lord. Now, in Acts chapter number 4, in verse number 32, these are the kind of sons God wants us to be. In Acts chapter number 4, in verse number uh, 30, uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to read this verse in reverse. I'm in Barcelona. You know, like when we come here, you see how we park. We park in reverse. But we came walking this way. You know, we came driving this way and then we park in reverse. So I'm going to read this verse in reverse. And then we're going to go forward. Praise the Lord. Look at Acts chapter number 4. I'm actually reading from verse 33. But I'm going to start reading from verse 36. And you will see why. In verse 36, it says, and Joseph. Acts 4 verse 36, it says, and what? Joseph, who was also named. Now, there's a version that says he was nicknamed. You know when they say somebody, they give somebody a nickname. It means there are certain things that he does. And he does them all the time. And we get used to what he's doing. Then we give him a nickname. Praise the Lord. If somebody, maybe he's a runner, maybe he's a fast runner, they might say, hey, that guy, um, kitchen. You understand what I'm saying? So when they give you a nickname, it means there's something that you do, and you do it regularly. Praise the Lord. You know, if there's somebody, they say, maybe they give him a name, they say, that guy is killer. You know, maybe he's got killer shots in football. 
Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I want you to understand something why the Bible brings this out here. It says, and Joseph, who was also named Barnabas. Another version says surnamed. So they gave him a nickname based on what we are going to read right now. Oh, this is going to bless you. It says, who was named Barnabas by the apostles, which translated, what does it say? Son of what? God wants us to become sons of encouragement. And I'm going to show you what kind of encouragement he was. It says, means son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having learned, these are his acts, of this son of encouragement. God is raising sons of God who are sons of encouragement. Say, I'm a son of encouragement. Just hit yourself. Say, I'm a son of encouragement. Because why I'm saying I'm reading two accounts, because here, this guy had the resources. And I'm going to show you another one who had no resources, but he became a son of encouragement. In fact, his name also means a son of encouragement. So we are not just reading about Joseph here. We are reading about a character. We are reading about a mindset. Can I get an amen? Because here it says he was nicknamed. That means his name is Joseph, but they nicknamed him Barnabas. They mean, you know what, you're an encourager, man. When we see you coming into the church, whether you are there or not, you are an encourager. Why? The Bible says, having land, say resources. He sold it and he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Oh, there's a powerful principle here. Why I said I'm reading this verse in the reverse? Because from verse 36 and verse 37, now we go to verse 33. And, you see the conjunction? You cannot start the sentence with end. I can't come here and say end, we went to town. Like, okay, what was preceding before you went to town? So, you see why I went to there? Because now verse number 33 starts with end. But you will see, this man, he had land, he sold it, he brought the proceeds. I want to believe that he had lands, but he picked one. There must be a balance to truth, am I right? So, there must, this guy was owning stuff. But because, notice, he was not just called Joseph. He was called a son. Sons of God must become sons of encouragement. And when God, I may not have the land, but I've got something extra. So in other words, if God has blessed me with a thousand rands, even if I take hundred rands, I become a son of encouragement. Because I don't want to create an impression that you are targeting certain people who have got certain assets that you may not have. No, no, no. It's a spirit. It's a mindset. Because let me say this, child of God. Money makes you more of what you have always been. Money doesn't change any person. If we are, if you are greedy now, when you have nothing, you know poor, poor people can be very greedy. So when God blesses you with millions... We're going to see it in color film. It's no longer in black and white. I was saying to my wife this morning that, you know what? My eldest son, there's money I'm giving him every month. He's still building his business. And I said, I've never even spoken to him that, you know what, my son? I know this amount may seem a lot for you to tithe, but start. We must teach them young. I heard about an accountant who was running a very successful business and was wealthy. And his brother told me, he said, do you know what? This brother of mine, even when we were still young, when he bought sweets, he gave us. He always loved sharing. And that's where he developed the spirit of generosity. Generosity does not start the day you get money. Paul says about the Christians in Macedonia, he said, even in their deep poverty, they abounded in their generosity. Oh, I want to say that again. He says the Christians in Macedonia, even though they were in their deep poverty, you know to be poor, that other poor, other poor people say, but that guy is poor. That's how poor they were. It's like they were living in a poor village and everybody was poor and they say, Emar la baba Because that's the idea I get from the fact that in their deep poverty, but the Bible says they abounded. Oh, come on now. May God make you and I to abound in generosity. 
abounding in generosity does not start with a big amount. It starts with a mindset and a big heart. The Bible says they even begged them. They begged them. They said, please receive. I don't know what they gave them because the Bible says they were poor. And not only poor, but they were deeply poor. It's a mindset. So, are we becoming sons of encouragement? Now, now the Bible says, where am I reading now? Verse 33. It says, and with great power. You see, when the radio station gets launched, that releases great power. When we go on television, that releases great power. Because we are sitting here and we are reaching the world. Praise the Lord. I mean, we never streamed in our church for reasons that our media guys were saying, you know what, we need to get the quality right. We don't want to just produce it for here. We want to produce it from uh, television. And on Christmas, I did a message called the mystery of the Magi or the wise men. And then the guys in our media team, then they started to post for me how many people linked into that message and they shared it. He said, I mean, this thing went 1,500 times. I almost said delete the whole thing. Because now I began to understand the power, the great power. And I was saying to my wife, I said, Apostle needs to be heard. He is a voice to this nation. I said, this man, any time I listen, the, the very first time I stepped into his church, I said, no, man. There was that, that like organic connection that he speaks into our lives with so much simplicity, with ease. I mean, this morning when we were sitting in the table and we were speaking to Ubabum Chalila about the whole concept of being drunk and I was listening. And I was able to understand something from scripture. In fact, if I'll digress a little bit, you know when, when they said they are drunk, Peter, remember what he, he said, he did not, these guys, they were unbelievers, they say these guys are drunk. And you asked, how is a drunk person sin? And then, the issue was, yeah, are you aware that Peter did, said, we are not drunk as you think. In other words, we did not drink Hennessy, but we drank something else. <laughs> the example Hennessy in a conference. Peter said, we are not as drunk as you think. That means we are drunk. I don't know if you never saw some drunkenness yesterday here. Do you know there's an implication of tongues in the Old Testament? Although he started in the you remember when Hannah was praying? Pete, Eli said, put away your wine from you. Because Eli, the whole priest, for him to say that, that means Hannah must have been doing stuff that. And remember, the Bible says she was speaking words and he could not hear. I think there was an insinuation of tongues in the Old Testament which was only revealed in the New Testament I want you to notice something that when Hannah answered answered like Peter he said oh my lord I'm not as drunk he said I did not drink strong drink he said but I'm of a he said I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit I've poured my heart to the Lord Bazalwan, this is the year we must get really drunk. Because <laughs> if, I, if I've lost my thought, my wife will remind me where I came from. I was going somewhere. Now, because when you look at even the whole concept of Ephesians 5, verse 18, Peter's Paul says, do not be drunk with wine, be filled. Bible scholars, they call that a parable or a statement of contrasting opposites. He said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, Paul is trying to say, when you really get filled with the Holy Spirit, you get drunk like somebody who has had a lot. Now, you can't get drunk by taking a sip. You must drink a lot. And when you said, when you are standing and you saw yourself like you were filled with stuff, do you know you are echoing the words of Paul in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7? He says, I've ran the race. I fought the good fight. He said, my life is now being poured out like a drink offering. You saw yourself as a vessel that God is pouring. So when we're standing before God's people, we must allow ourselves to be poured. And the reason why the church has not made great strides, it's because 
we take a sip instead of drinking too much. He said, do not be drunk with wine in which there is dissipation, but be filled. No, what Paul is trying to say, that a guy who is drunk will lose his step, but when you are drunk with the Spirit, you will find your step. You will be led by the Spirit. I needed to pass by some area. Let's go back to the message. And with great power, <laughs> the apostles, they gave witness to the what? To the resurrection of the Lord. So when the sons of encouragement, they take their place in the kingdom, we are going to have the great power. The great power is not limited to the four walls of our churches. You know, as we're sitting in the table having breakfast, and I sat there, there's a book I shared with our church called The Jewish Phenomenon. And why? It's because... Our Christian roots are, our Christian faith is rooted in the Jewish tradition. And what this author in this book called The Jewish Phenomenon, and when we were sitting there, I was like, look at us here. We came to the same place, but we must also mind the same thing. Because as we're sitting there, it's like we are resources. We are a resource house. May God help us that we do not live here still fragmented. But that I know you, Baba Manana, the way I should know you. Because we come, we meet together, coming to the same conference, but not having the same mind. And if this fraternity will cause us to organically begin to build friendship and stop flirting with one another, and start to understand that but Mashazi, there's something I need from you and there's something you need from me and not hide ourselves in our little corner we can make great strides and shake this nation the Bible says with great power and then the Bible says and what and great grace was upon them all and then it says, no, was there any one of them who lacked? For all were possessors of lands. Do you see that? What did we read about Joseph? He had a land and he sold it. Are you seeing this? Now here it says, and many were possessors of lands. Do you see the word plural? Or houses. Sold them and they brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the feet of the apostles and they distributed to anyone as had need. Do you see why I started with verse 36? Because Joseph had a land, he sold it and he brought the money and he placed it at the feet of the apostles. In other words, as God blesses us, we must understand that God never blesses us for us. We must understand that God wants us to become a conduit, to become sons of encouragement. I'm going to do the last one and then I'll be done. It's in the book of Nehemiah because if you go and look at his name, this character, I just wish I had time. Five minutes. Thank you. Got a good time, keep up as alone. Hallelujah. In Nehemiah, and I, so my title, the, Developing the Mindset of a Son, is Becoming a Son of Encouragement. May I say that? Say, I'm a son of encouragement. Here's another one in the Old Testament. I said, Joseph, at least he had resources. This one did not have resources, but he had connections. He had connections. There are many of them. Esther had a connection with the king. Joseph was, had a connection with Pharaoh. Do you understand when I say connections? Because how God is going to bring the manifestation of the sons of God to come to pass, he takes one, Joseph had to leave his brothers in Bethlehem and find himself in Egypt. Can I say that again? Joseph must be in Egypt. Egypt, I'm talking about the world system. He understands the system of the world so that when his brothers come to Egypt, he's able to coach them. Okay. You said five minutes. Now just stretch it. Just a little bit. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakalia, verse number one. It came to pass in the month of Kislev. Now, the month of Kislev in the Jewish calendar, it's like the ninth month when I studied it. Why I'm saying this? Because you're going to see something here. Joseph, I'm contrasting Nehemiah with Joseph. Because if you look at the word Nehemiah, it comes from the word Nehem. It speaks about the comforter of Yahweh. 
Nehemiah. You see, I know it's spelled Yah here, but it's Nehem and Yah from the word where you get the word Yah, Yahweh. Praise the Lord. So he's the comforter of Jehovah. We had one who is a son of encouragement. Now we are dealing with a son of who is a comforter. We must become sons who are bringing comfort. Because that's what his name means. Now in the month of Kislev, you'll understand why I'm reading this. In the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. So now they are coming to visit. Now look at how many years they were here in captivity. In the 20th year, they were left with another 50 years because it was 70 years of captivity. Am I right? So now look at this year. That Hanani, one of my brethren, they came with men from Judah. And I asked them, this is very important. I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and who had survived the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. So they are coming to visit him. He's in captivity in Babylon. And Hanani comes and Nehemiah asks two important questions. When I meet with you, Pastor Zandi, what are the first two questions you're asking me reveals what's in your heart? How are you? How are your children? How's your family? Nehemiah, he's the cupbearer. He works in the palace. I mean, they're slaves, but he works in the palace. He's the cupbearer, but he, you know, if it was some of us, guys, let me show you, Hanani. Do you know where I work? Look at the wine bottles I'm, I'm using to serve the king. Upuzangali. Guys, let me show you the bedroom of the king. Guys, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you what the king rides. You see that cart there? Let me show you the wines of the king. No, Nehemiah. You see, the sons of who are comforters. The sons of encouragement. They care about the well-being and the state of God's people and God's house. God's people and God's house. God's people and God's house. You lamented yesterday that we cannot be here in the next 20 years. We need to have our own houses. Am I talking to somebody this morning? They, you see, we must be consumed. Like the psalmist says, the zeal of your house has consumed me. Nehemiah, you see, there's different slaves. There are those who work in the fields. Nehemiah would have said, guys, Nehemiah would have I just keep tasting. He's not bothered by that. That is in a prestigious position. Notice the two questions. He said, he asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and survived captivity and concerning Jerusalem. Now he's going to get answers. And they said to me, the survivors, they're answering the first question, who are left from the captivity they are in great distress and reproach. The second question, he asked them about Jerusalem. They said, the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. How are the believers? They are in great distress. They are struggling. They don't have jobs. Am I talking to somebody? So when we come into our churches and we are invited, we must not just look at the pomp and the pageantry. We must look at the fact that the people who are sitting behind our comfort seats, how are they? How many are working? Panjan, because then it doesn't help for us to... I want to believe that every believer loves to tithe. I don't believe there's a believer who doesn't want to tithe, doesn't want to give. But in tithe, I have nothing. But Nehemiah does not have the resources like Joseph, but he knows that he's got the connection with the king. So he's asking this question strategically. You know, sometimes you can ask people, they say, how are you? How are your children? Oh, my children are struggling. And then say, oh, okay. And now, uh, where are we going? But Nehemiah is going to do something about this. He's going to do something. He's, he, he, you know, when I look at his name, that the Bible says he's a comforter of Yahweh, a comforter of Jehovah. That means God in heaven is looking for people on earth who are going to bring comfort to me. We must become sons of encouragement and become sons of comfort comfort who god i want to be a son of comfort i don't want to be invited in a place and all i'm looking for is an honorarium i want to go to a place and honor 
God help us. We must not go into a place because of what we want to get, but we must go to a place because of what we want to give. Look at this. So it was. When he, they give him this response, when I heard these words, he said, I sat down, I wept, and I, went, went, I mourned for many days. What did he do? When they tell him, he said, can I get a seat? The Jews are in distress. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down. The gates are burned with fire. When he heard that story, the Bible says he wept for many days. You remember I read earlier that it was in the month of Kislev? He mourned. Nehemiah became a comforter of Yahweh. He did not only sit down and weep and mourn. He fasted for a good three months. Why I'm saying that? Because when you read, follow this. And I said, I pray. Lord God of heaven, O oh great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mess with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive, your eyes be open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you. We have not kept the commandments and the statutes and the ordinances which you commanded your servants, Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your, Moses, your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though some of you were cast out of the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather you from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. Oh Lord, I pray, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray. Grant him mercy in the sight of this man. They are telling him the state of God's people, the state of God's house. He is troubled. He starts in the month of Kislev. When you read, and now it explains it. He says, for I was the king's cup bearer. I serve wine. He's the one that tastes the wine. If it's got poison, and then he gives it to the king. Now notice verse 1, and I'm going to maybe just you know and it came to pass in the month of nisan the month of nisan because the hebrews they use a lunar calendar it's between march to april from september nehemiah even by this time was still in fasting until the month of march to april that's why those months are pointed in scripture they are not just pointed just for fun they are pointed if you understand the economy of scripture words are placed there for a reason the writer of this book is trying to help us that this man alone, unlike Esther who said, fast for me, and he got other people and the maids to fast, Nehemiah, he's moved, he's touched about these two things, the state of God's people and the state of God's house, and he goes into a time of mourning and weeping and fasting, and what is he praying for? All of his prayer here, that's why I read it in detail. Have you noted he was not praying for himself? He was not praying for his family? He's praying a prayer of intercession. He's confessing the sins of his people. He said, Lord, we have all sinned. That's what God wants. We must become sons of comfort. And if ever, that's why I say we must not pray end user prayers. Lord, give me a house. Lord, give me a car. No, those things, the Bible says your father knows that you have need of them. In fact, those prayers are what I call additional prayers. Praise the Lord. He said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. All these things shall be what? The word add, addition. It's a mathematical term. Praise the Lord. So, I must not be bothered about the next thing I need. I must be bothered to be a comforter of Yahweh. I want to respect time. I am not done, Bazalwan. I hope they will invite me in the next Superman conference. But what I wanted to say <laughs> about, about Joseph is that 
because he understood the world system, when his brothers came, he said, Pharaoh is going to ask you a question. He's going to say, what is your occupation? And you will say to Pharaoh, you must say we've been shepherds since youth. He said, because the Egyptians, they detest shepherds. And you are going to be placed in Goshen. Joseph played the reverse psychology. Think about you in a position of power and money and giving your brothers what they, they are going to ask them in an interview. Because I asked myself, why would Joseph say, Pharaoh is going to ask you, what's your occupation, when they know? I mean, I'm going to send away an apostle a pretoria and then it was a good over and over it was a sudden spirit no that means joseph understood that they were going to make a mistake let me suppose and make a hypothesis they were going to say we are the descendants of abraham remember what you said there are certain areas we need to be coached when he was talking about idols is it you kaya that you must not say jesus because they will kick you out here. He said, no, 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 no. When you get there, Pharaoh is going to ask you a question. Pharaoh represents the world system. There are certain things we need those who are Joseph in Egypt who are going to coach us. That you know what? There's this tender. This is how you must cost it. Call it corruption. Call it nepotism. But I'm here to speak to sons. I'm telling you, if Joseph was around Babumchali, you know what I was going to say? We're going to say that's corruption on a grand scale. Because Joseph gives them a question. Pharaoh is going to ask you, what is your occupation? And then he says, this is the answer. He gives them the question paper and the memorandum. Why am I going there? Because we are suffering needlessly in the body of Christ because the sons who are in positions of power they need Mordecai who will tell Esther that Esther you know why you are married there it's not that Stalugu on Instagram it's so that you understand that the Jews they are in trouble and if you don't use your connection deliverance will come from another place and they are going to find out who you are and they are still going to God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. That was amazing. That was too much. Hallelujah. You know, I'm reminded of a dream as well about to receive our next speaker. I'm reminded of a dream that I had a month ago where there were sons that were coming into soul and spirit. People that were displaced wherever that they were. They came in already carrying the message of the house. And God said in the dream, you know what will happen? You will preach this year and then you'll preach after 10 years because there'll be too many people. And for me, this is just like a testament of that dream. That there are people, sons of the apostles that were everywhere already carrying this message. Pastor Sam, thank you so much. What you have released to us this morning is too much. As you were speaking, I, I just felt the anointing of superiority just being released on us, of governance being released on us. It wasn't just words. It was just so awesome. Thank you for shifting us to this mindset. It's already done. And we know that God moves us from glory to glory to glory. The house is about to rip this morning. We have an awesome, awesome gift, an awesome gift, someone that we have grown very fondly of, and he has given us reasons to do so. He has grown also in leaps and bounds. When he came, he was just a star that was anointed, but he kept shifting and changing gears until every time that he grabs the mic, it's like, oh my goodness. So, Pastor Kaya, we honor you this morning. We love you very much. Not the emoticons of WhatsApp. We love you very much. <laughs> and we honor you. And we know that God has anointed you for us this morning. Please just be free. Hear me saying. <laughs> Please.
please feel free to minister as God has sent you to minister to us this morning. Can we just stand on our feet and celebrate Pastor Kaya, the bishop. God has spoken in this place. Let's try Lungu Lungu Lizanda once again. Um, you can take your seats. I'd like to greet the wonderful apostle. I'd like to greet my mother. Um, we honor them. We don't get tired to honor them because we know that our lives are what they are because of their prayers. Uh, because of them... Uh, really pushing us to our destinies. I am a living product of words that have been spoken out of their mouths. I'm a living product of being woken up in the middle of winter, being told to pray uh, in the eve of, yeah, June 2009, I think I arrived in Swaziland. Um, and, you know, I was just a young boy, uh, starry-eyed. Uh, I don't know if I loved God, but I think I had a heart for him. <laughs> Uh, and I, I just met these two people that had preached in my father's church and my heart was extremely captivated. Um, as a young man, I, I just took a step of faith um, and I just visited them. I don't visit people. I'm a very, I'm a loner. I, I like my little space, but I just took time and I found myself living in a granny flat during June. Uh, and, and, and I remember the first night I arrived, I arrived late in the afternoon, evening, we had a great time, sat in the lounge, talked till 2 a.m., uh, or oh, around 3 a.m., and then, like clockwork, 5 a.m., someone was knocking at my door. I'm like, hey, the demons have started. <laughs> go, 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 wake up, it's prayer time. I'm like, what? You made us stay up from, till 3. Now you want us to get up and pray. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> And that, those things have shaped the rest of my life completely. Um, today, I don't need to set an alarm to wake up and pray. I cannot believe it. Uh, my heart is hungry. Uh, I got up this morning. There were no lights. And I was just like, Father, you're so kind to me. Thank you for your grace that you could look so kindly upon me and allow me to, in, to encounter you in such a rich way to encounter you so that my life, I can see my life transform in front of my own eyes. You know, when Miss Tula Tenacity, we don't sing that song out of religiosity. We sing it because we don't know how far we would have gone. We don't know how deep we would have gone in messing up in life. And God was Tagula. And I'm a living testimony of Tagulu Amen, Bazalwan. So, another round of applause for our parents. Amen. I'd like to greet all the pastors uh, that are here um, with all the officers that are represented. I honor you. I'm just a little boy. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. You don't have to. Um, and, 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 and I honor every single gift that's here. Pastor Sam, you've helped us. You've helped us. Because mind, our mindset is messed up. Scripture says, forget the former things. Forget what is behind you. Stretch to what's ahead of us. And you are pushing us to stretch this morning to what lies ahead. And we really appreciate you so much. Uh, Pastor T, we love you. Thank you so much. Amen. He, he has really made my job very easy. You might hear the shortest sermon that you've ever heard in a conference. Because I don't like speaking what has already been said. You know what I mean? There's, I'm just, he said, I'm here for the decoration. Literally, I'm hanging the pictures on the wall. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm hanging the pictures now. The mirror is going up. Everything is done. You know, I'm gonna, someone is going to hand you over the keys at some time. Someone is going to hand over the keys at some time. I'm in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. I want to talk about the faith of the sons of God. I want to talk about what shall be said about your faith. That's the question that I ask. Please ask your neighbor today, what shall be said about your faith? Come on, ask your other neighbor. Say, what shall be said about your faith? 
Guilty one, ningo kolo aguaku. Guilty one, wam kole la i nu Jehovah we na. Si owazi nu oka nguti wam kole lungu lungu for i. Would you have been recorded in the book of Hebrews chapter eleven? What could have, what would, what would have been said about you in the era that we live in? What would you have dared to believe God for and, and face the odds and go against everything else in society? Go against your history, go against your upbringing, go against your nationality, go against your skin, go against your gender. What are you willing to go against to pursue what God has given you? Okay, Caleb, would you give me this mountain at the age of 80? I can still take this mountain. What shall be said about your faith? As a son of God, what shall be said? What would you have dared to believe? Are you just going to be a Christian that came to church one day? What shall be said about you? What will you have accomplished in this era? I want to stir up your faith. I want you to believe again. I want you to walk out of here and act out what has been said. Because we can come to conferences, come to churches, do all these religious things, but we have no, we can't, we take the form of God, but we deny the power. In other words, go and influence. Scripture says in the book of 1 Kings chapter 2, this is when Elisha, the first miracle that he, that he does, this is the, the leaders of the city of Jericho came to him and said, my father, we've been placed in the right platform. The city is in the best position. That, that's the church. Scripture says, no, no one, the city, we've been, we've been set on the hill. We're in the perfect position. We're in the perfect position. And Uti, but the problem with the city, the, more, the water is bad. And the ground is fallow. So we're in the best position, but there's no life. There's barrenness. That means there are no results. You are in the best position, but your life has got no results. You are, you are not spreading out life. And I'm saying, Utu, 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 Elisha, Utu, Elisha, give me a new bowl and give me some salt. Intru- give me a new bowl. Give me a content. This speaks, that new bowl basically speaks about the new believer. That means it's a new vessel. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation this is a new these are new creation realities that we've been dealing with for the last couple this, we, are, we are new bowls we are new containers we've been molded Gabusha. Jeremiah Uti, go to the potter's house and see what the potter is going to do with you we've been shaped Gabusha. we are new bowl, we are new bowls and it's and then give me some salt Utu Jesu, you are the salt of the earth that means see to when a situation when also to so too much when I couldn't get wrong in the it's what's the lending gaggy lung is so in course so long so when the new pole with the new salt when also fix a business lack or the organization or seven zelay you are the new pole you are the salt in that pole see so too much when you are going to have to solve the problems you are going to have to rearrange the systems you are going to have to make sure you have the mind, the vision to accomplish. What will be the history that will be told about you? Everybody has got a church here in Swaziland. What shall be said about yours? Everybody has a pulpit. What shall be said about yours? That's the mandate. I said I'm in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Literally, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. That means we, the way we are going to place the, re, the withdrawal. Oh, because I'm calling me a withdrawal. The only way we're going to withdraw is by faith. 
We will draw by faith, living the life of the things that as Ngabon, see Pile, see Pile, say that is Yabonagala. And I'm trying to want to build on that. Listen, Kalapans, very, I'm not going to talk to you about faith. Nabefundis in Batalin goes in. Gan Kumbuzan. Here's the second scripture I want to build on Numbers chapter 23. Let's see, God is not a man that he should lie. <laughs> Nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said it and will he not do it? Has he not spoken it and will he not make it happen? The Holy Spirit asked me to do this this morning. Three years ago, I got divorced. I made a terrible decision in life. I got divorced. I landed myself in the hottest water I never imagined I'll land myself in. I, it just was a horrible regression in my life. That when I look back, I realize, Zuguti, in life you can be so wrong and think you're so right. That's just life for you. You can think you're so right, yet you are so wrong and you have to awaken to that luckily enough my parents they told me straight you are wrong i live with those people men and i'm still here told me you are wrong and i made this horrible decision broke up my family walked out of my marriage did all sorts of cartwheels and i missed god in the entire situation the entire situation messed messed up just walking in so much ungodliness from a mindset perspective and not being able to see God not being able to see what God has in store for you and what that situation did for me from a fleshly or carnal perspective made me look like I can make my decisions I can stand up for what I want I'm a man but from the spirit I was wrong out of the will of God, being stupid, being carnal, not being in faith, not believing God, God can turn things around. So I want to preach from that platform and God showed me something that I've now had to live to believe for. That now that you've done this, the way I got out of that situation that, because I thought it was done, I thought okay, I need to, two things, I think, I think I'd made up my mind about two things. I thought I was going to go back to school. That was the first thing. Well, I've always wanted to be a pilot. I'm good at maths. I'm good at science. I'm going to go back and pursue my pilot issues. That was the first thing because I thought no one's going to listen to me ever again in the church that I go to. And possibly no one's ever going to buy another album. How are we going to believe you? Which God are you serving when? So in the midst of my wrongs, and then I was still wrong about how I was going to deal with it. So even how I was applying spirituality, I was even wrong even how I was going to apply spiritual principles to get out of that situation. And God awakened me to something, and the apostle has been alluding to this. God told me one day that you are spirit. You can't divorce. I was like, what do you mean I'm spirit? I can't divorce. He's like, yeah, you, you, you sinned when, but your spirit cannot sin. Those that are born of God cannot sin. The book of John says that. It says they cannot. So until you wake up to who you are, you will continue to allow what you've done in life to affect who you are supposed to be. If I had applied the principle of what the wrongs that I had done, I would have never been standing here today. If I had continued in my wrongs, so I was wrong from a carnal perspective or a fleshy perspective, but I was willing to even be wrong from a spiritual perspective. Because I wanted to punish myself and appease. I couldn't even attend weddings anymore. My dad would actually, he would annoy me to the point where I'm just like, why are you doing this? My dad would leave his amapera. Every time he was going to a wedding, he would leave his amapera and ask me to amapera him. And then in two of those weddings, you know what he did? He said, he, there was, imagine, some shot when, you know what he's doing? Uzo shatisa abant. And every time he'd speak about marriage, he would be speaking directly to me. 
and he'd, he'd stand there and say, what God has joined together, let no man separate. I'm standing there like this. <laughs> and you tell them, I'd be standing there. And you know what he was doing? He was chopping at me through the word. That making sure that I don't think that I can subject myself or downgrade the word of God. Because of my situation, I must believe the word of God even in the state where it does not suit me. I must be able to ascertain and appropriate because it's not it, the flesh will it, the, it, the flesh profited nothing but it's the spirit that will give life so what I must do I must appropriate that word to my spirit so that it breathes into my soul and I awaken to it so what, what has been happening in the last couple of years in my life is a, is, is a complete deletion of, of, of how I saw myself when it comes to the word of God. I had to completely divorce myself from my divorce state. I have to. Kaya, why are you sharing this? Because now you are being limited by your mistakes. What you're doing... Every time you're approaching God, you are not appropriating him by faith. You are, operating, you, are, you are appropriating him by what you've done and what you think you deserve. And I'm telling you, I want to help you. Uguti, there is, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And faith works by love. So until you can appropriate how much God actually loves you and how much he actually wants you to succeed, you will not be able to ascertain the thing that he has in store for you. So as you, when you look back on your history, do not use that as an accounting thing to say it equals to this. You have to look at the word of God and what the word has said about you. And the word must tell you that it equals to this. So now it's very clear for me. Now, let's go into what we want to talk about. Scripture says that in the book of, uh, the book of, the book of Genesis chapter 18, God appeared to Abraham. Genesis chapter 18 verse 1. He was under the memory tree. Scripture says that he was sitting at the entrance of his tent. When these, the, verse 1, Uti, the Lord appeared. Uh-huh. Verse 2, Chen Uti, there were three people. He saw three visitors, but the word of God has already translated. We don't need to pray in the spirit. We don't need to ask for a revelation. We know he appeared, as far as how the Lord appears in three people. Uh-huh. But he, the Lord alone appears. Uh-huh. Don't question how. That's just all of them. Whether you want to call it a theophany, a Christianity, it's the Lord. Amen. 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 This is what I want to talk about. The locality, he was standing at the entrance of his tent. And the scripture is very clear that it's in the heat of the day. There is no need for you to stand in the heat of the day at the entrance of the place. And scripture is very clear to define where he is. He is at the trees of Memra. That means these are huge trees where he could have sat in comfort, but he chose the entrance. Scripture says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than go to the house of the Lord. Now, I want to awaken you, Guti. Where is your position by faith? Where do you need to sit? The scripture tells us that in Genesis chapter 15, God had already promised Abraham, Guti, so when to Babo is this way, Ngulungulam, Abraham, Mambos, Kanja, Nginganando, Dan. No, no, no. I will give you a son. And I want you to know that between the age of 70 when he receives this promise and the age of 99 when these guys appear, he's standing at the entrance. That means what the entrance means, I'm standing anticipating something to happen. 
That means even after so much time that has passed, I'm going to sit at the entrance. Scripture says he's expectant of Lokungulungule Kuluma. Scripture tells us in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, this is at the entrance of their tents. And the cloud, the pillar of cloud, the pillar of cloud would not go into the tent with Moses, but the pillar of cloud would stand at the entrance. That means when you stand at the entrance, you stand in the presence. Scripture says that is the threshold. Those where, this is where transactions happen. Scripture then tells us, when these three men arrive, they ask Abraham, where is your wife? Here's the answer. Scripture is clear. When he had to answer, Scripture says, when he went, when he, when he was in that, Moses, 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 Abraham is standing at the entrance. I'm going to it now. We're in Genesis chapter 18. This is Angulu Angulu. They are going to speak about the locality of And this, when God was showing me this this morning, I was like, Kosiam. Where am I located in this? Scripture says that when they asked, so anyway, Abraham goes in, he prepares a lamb, he prepares lunch for them. When he prepares them, they ask, Uguti, where buff? Upum Fazwak, I'm in verse 9. Where is your wife? Please read where the wife is. So he said, Here, where? So you've got the husband standing at the entrance. You've got the wife standing in. And now that means that corner or sa expectant corner se give appeal. And scripture says, can two walk together unless they have agreed? Why are they asking where is your wife? That means scripture says, what God has joined together, let no man separate. If you're standing at the entrance, your wife is supposed to be standing right there with you. So I want to speak to you ministers, but here's a, word of, here's a marriage seminar for you. Where your husband is, you better find yourself there as well. Don't be in contradiction with who God has called you to be with. Zitole in agreement about this matter we're standing at the entrance. So Linda Lenga ne easy figure. I get quite yet away to also decide to go to Osayong and attend in. Walo Munya at the site till ten is gonna wait it wait expectantly. Pelanculum of a singer and a shot. Ngias Guti, Ngias Guti, Ngawas, Kolelungulungu, Indumfazo, Mat and Gagan Zegelond. And vice versa, Ngawas, Utumfazo, Makole, Indum, Kulunga, missing it, Mina. Come on, baby, that's not gonna happen. So namhlanje ngifuna sibe nomqondo of being united stand on one thing we cannot waver if we are believing God that God is going to use us in this generation that means akekho fanela vusa umunye ngeprayer everybody is up we are praying if we are serving God we yazi impostol wakhulume into ukuthi okwazi kungishada ngumpostol usho njalo impostol nge ungishade mina angishadeki because so many I, I've been in that situation okay I'm, share, I'm oversharing I've been in that situation can we not talk can we revisit this matter 2pm eight months as he visit 2pm I'm available for you 2pm I know we talk about it now Lapa we are one minute from the entrance of the church what and Yashimael, I mean. <laughs> no, 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 Yashimael, Yashimael, I mean, and in Tandazile. But in Yahizu, and then in Tandazile, I say, 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 the apostle is helping, and he's not helping us so that we live in sin or uh, be misbehave. He's helping, not nah, let's behave as such. If you're an apostle, behave like one then. If you're a pastor, behave like one. If you're a man of God, behave like one. Then you won't have any troubles with your wife. What shall be said about you? Watch, scripture says, 
The three men. By a sort of man, I said, on, Patrick, Patrick, on a 99. Next year, was a bunning gun. Oh, Mama, low set ending. This is a good one. What's that? Oh, there's a good agaco with entrance. No one they take because I get called expectant. Yeah, that's right. And Lalala, in that shaga, I got to say good The wording there, Liti, can your servant still have pleasure? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got doubt. I got can go in. Ugu pleasure. Udo, gani do? Gani zo le ngan? Zolo kala, ugu tin gani nzi waganja. Angbon, Angbon, Gaibon, the Benga, the Sierra Gion, gives a toll in my pleasure. <laughs> she's so far removed from the promise that I, I, she's not even interested on the process. She's not even willing to go through the process because the process is a failure. Pelagayana Shat, and I was a Kulumanji. Right, let's close it up. Where I'm going with this, Bazalan, God is not a man that he should lie. So this week, I want you to resurrect every dream that God has shown you. Don't back down. This is not the time to back down. That means we need to lay claim. You know when God restores, that means when, you, when God restores, he goes back, and he goes back, so young kind misdirect because of Zangwe Tole and that the following tole. That's why Litigay, when the thief is caught, he must give seven. Why is it seven? Because he's then redeeming the time. He's redeeming the time that was lost. He's redeeming the delay that has happened. He's redeeming This is they shall never be put to shame. So where we begin to go back into our womb. Scripture says in the book of Romans chapter 4 that Abraham considered not. Yeah. The womb. That Scripture is telling us that means when, they, when he was told he considered not. You don't see that in Genesis. We only get to see it in Romans. That means only the Roman, the, the Umpalu, Apostle Paul, we are not such a thing. When they got Ganjan, Utole into Ungazu, so it's all Ganjan. You don't consider the circumstances. You don't. When you believe God for a building, you don't consider Imaling, so it's hard to happy. You are considering the womb, Moshonjan. You can't consider the womb. When you're considering God for a television channel, you can't consider Gunji Kasan Kobinje my office in the Ikasa. You don't consider how when you face God. Because this is how faith works. Scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And this is how God, this is the faith of God, even the faith that speaks. The scripture says, and God said, the only thing you need to consider is your mouth. In the previous chapter, that means no man can say, Who Baba was easy? Who Baba was so Nam Sanje, Gifunoba no Mondo, who would see Indofanary Kulum for Kulum and Deso and Zekat Pell. Scripture says we need to speak the end from the beginning. Yeah. That means that's the only thing our mandate now is that when you look at your congregation, you don't address them. You're, you are now the father of the nations. You're not just preaching to a branch in Manzini or Mbabane. You're preaching to the world. So even the way that you're praying, even the way that you're reading scriptures, also, you're no longer preaching to the audience. You're preaching to the disciples of the world. 
So Namshanja, I want you to resurrect. My mission this morning, Holy Spirit told me, is that people have decided Ubu Tingegi Senze Galeanto. I don't know at what level. We're sitting at multiple levels. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it is. What have you resoluted in your mind? Because yes, sometimes you can go into yes, you guys can speak for God, yet God did not ask for any spokesperson. You can speak on behalf of God. And you misappropriate something that was supposed to be yours. Oh no, we serve a generational God. No, you failed in your generation. You must accept. David, scripture says, when he finished, when he accomplished the purpose of God, he slept. That means he did not, he did not leave. The, the building of the temple belonged to Solomon, but he had decided that he'll build it. He built the temple. He did. He built it. Because I've now made appropriation for everything in the house of God. So if I give you the material, who built that thing? You mean in your so I'm telling you, I don't know what you've been believing God for. I don't know what has happened in your business. I don't know what COVID did to you. I don't know what happened in your church. I don't know how many members you've lost. I don't know what, I don't know more, how much is it going to take? You don't even serve. Scripture says in the book of Ecclesiastes, he has put eternity in our hearts. You don't even need to look at time. You've got no business to, to look at time. You would say, I need a 10-year plan. What God can do in 10 years, he can do this year. If you can just open up your mind and open up your faith. So it's, that's all I have for you. I just want people who are just going to rise up and forget what is behind them. Forget about the mistakes. Forget about what could have been. Forget about how wrong you were or how right you were. I want you to arise and shine for the glory of God has risen upon you. Can we stand to our feet? I'm done. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. Yeah. That word, that word overcome, scripture says in the book of uh, 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 John chapter 16, uh, in, uh, 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 in this world you will have trouble. Yeah. But Uti, be of good courage. I, I have overcome the world. 14, Uti, let not your hearts be troubled. Mm. No, no, no matter, Uti, you are troubled about many things. One thing is needed from you. Just sit here. That means if you have not developed the language, the scripture verse, the posture for something, don't even speak about it. Go into the secret place, sit at the feet, develop it. Because in this one, you'll meet the sycamore tree. And from afar, it's going to look like it has fruit. When you have to come close to it, it has nothing. It will disappoint you. But if you are Jesus, you'll curse it. You'll know, no, you're not supposed to be like this. You're going to die to your roots. You have to build. Build. God has been helping me to build language. How I say things. And if I don't have the words yet, just shut up. Don't set, the, don't set things into course about your children that you're not going to be able to reverse. If you don't know yet what God has in store for them, get on your knees, seek the face, then speak. I don't know what you believe in God for. The only thing I came for, I'm telling is what will be said about your faith. Guilty one, Gawi. Guilty one, Gami. I always tell my church, it's anxious. Imagine, imagine if to this day I'll be celebrated for idols. I'd be such an epic failure. Imagine, I won that thing 11, 12 years ago. To a lower winner, my idols. <laughs> because scripture says the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. That means whatever has happened that is a victory in my past has become a latter thing. I need to expect a latter, wherever, a latter glory in my life. 
So you can't call me an idol's winner. It's so small and so minute. It's insignificant to what is out there. I'm believing God. We want to buy a stadium. Remember last year, much. We want to buy a stadium. A stadium that's for sale. We're believing God for a stadium. And we've been talking about this for a couple of years. I think I've told my parents. We've been talking about this for a couple of years. And we are believing God because that's where we're going. We want to, we want to inherit the world. Yeah, well, that's where we want to get. If there's anything that should be said about us, we're not going to be a church assemblers. We're not going to be a church assemblers. I'm not called a Lukshin. Young born and young. Is a Lukshin Mung born and give me the loot and keep a band in my Lukshin. Keep your mind set your bluish. I've been called to liberate them from the mindset your bluish. And yes, Bazola, I'm only 37. When they sit under the ministry of his visibility, about seven years ago, Kaya, Queen, you spoke this word, and get a degree. And Ukuluma, Ukuluma, Ukulum Sampa, and Gomutona, eighteen, Ukuluma Sampa, and Goma, Matapona, forty three. Also, Nam Kalim Kukuin, a forty three, Nam Sanding, a degree, and I'm approaching Gubo principal, Gulla Scott. That's what we've been called to do. That's what I'm living for. I'm living to turn people's lives around. I'm not living for anything else. I'm living to see transformation. I'm living to see people move from glory to glory. What shall be said about you? What shall be said? So I want you, Namtanj, we're just going to pray in the Holy Spirit just for two minutes, three minutes, and I just want you to unearth. Just unearth. Listen, that they say, it's a disappointment. Isn't that the same value? Yeah, just break the fallow ground of listening to God's essence. Like, I don't know what it is. Kipalisa tunina shaba. Larika masudi rika masudi ni. Mareka paradu shandeka paradusa. Every single business, Madushubiri kana sudi kaba. Every single organization, Narubele de yanganda rakadisha. Lurika paradisha leka paradu. Every single church, Putuli rika nasa. Iyangungu ni yanga na, gini yanga ni kaisa. Iyitilisha dukudu, magidi gidi. Every idea, makapiisa tadiyasho. Every single makadushede, every single organization represented here, Maliria kadusha. Maraka papa papa rutu pirita la rekade every single marriage makapa la rekade sha marukula ra every single dream murika di rekade malepa rekade rekata paruti liri diki di maruku para de de rekade arika tala every single platform makapa la di kana sota ba makuviri kapa rekade. Eh, hey, shudu titi, i titi kapa, u papa pele, i salatalea, u la kapalane, e shupalete, arika paradu shatana. Furuti nikini shaparadese, pariti rika paradusha. Paradirikere, nakalita la pala, usuluku pili, akalika tilele, asulute deha, akilike dehe, ila kalatata, ila kapalato, eh, papa patuluko, pine pele tata, akilata naka, atiakala, usupupupu, epipakata, eleketeke, ilikitika, akatakata, isha palato, eleketena, anika parotata dia. Oh, light us on fire, for you've made us a fire and a flame, my Father. We thank you, my Father, that you are moving us into the place of purpose, into the place of our destinies. You are catapulting us, mighty God, to the place of our destinations. In the name of Jesus, we will not settle for anything that is not of you. We will not settle for anything that you have not put for our lives. In Jesus' name, awaken us to the truth of who we are. seated in his presence. Thank you so much, Pastor Kaya. You just moved us from the tent to the entrance. I noticed from your sermon that Sarah was not far. It's almost like he was, she was in the house. She was in the church, but she had lost her expectation and her faith. And you just moved us this morning. 
Thank you so much. We, we really appreciate your ministry. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I, I just feel like See, I'll try it, I'll live like. But the word that has been released this morning is it's a word of action. Where we, we don't just say amen, but we begin also to repent. You know, as Pastor Kaya was, was, was praying, it was like he's digging. Like, I was even thinking, you know, it's funny how someone who came to put on the mirrors is now digging. He was just digging. And I don't want to take time because, I mean, when we come to church, we really want to go. But if it were not the case, and we thank God for the pastors and you who are orderly because some of us love this order. But if it were up to me, I, I would just ask us to just go into a time of repentance and really take up those things that have been dug out, up and out by the Holy Spirit. So many of us, like our, the anointing, God was saying the first day of the conference, you have played with my anointing. You have played with the anointing upon your life. You've looked down upon it. You've not known what to do with it. We've just looked down upon it. And this is what Pastor Kai is talking about. Because the anointing is for the things that have already been deposited in the inside of us. That we then just decide, Guti, no, I can't be a pastor because I don't preach like that. And God is saying, go fetch that. Go fetch that. And I, I pray that this message continues to work in us and God continues to speak to us so that we can go back and really just say, Lord, we are embracing everything that you have given to us. Amen. So at this point, it's offering time, blessing time. That's what they say. But, um, okay, let me not do that. I'm going to invite um, Pastor Jiwo Dumo, Pastor Kukumiene from EZM, and she's going to help us this morning to receive the offering. I wanted to say um, that, you know, God said that everything that we do in this conference, it's a prophetic action. We are teaching Swaziland, like we're teaching Swaziland. And he reminded me of a time when we were at a retreat and God says birthing and we started to groan and groan. And the, f the next night, um, one of the prophets, pa uh, Pastor Nosi Pomashazi from Wheat Bank, we were th with them at the retreat. The Holy Spirit woke her up and she heard the animals doing exactly what we were doing. The animals around that area, it's like a, a bush place where pastors and would be like, a snake will come. <laughs> The animals were groaning exactly like, she says exactly. And the Holy Spirit just said, wake up and listen. So God was saying, whatever that we do in this conference, we're teaching Swaziland. It's a prophetic action. So money in this land is submitted to the things that have been holding the land. So as we give, we are teaching Swaziland to stop giving there and start giving to the one who really deserves all our worship, which we also bring in terms of our seed, amen. So I'm just saying that as, as, as we are being ministered to in terms of offering, let's not um, bring our offerings because, oh, it's another time to offer. No, understand the assignment that we have, amen. So now the word that we're going to hear is aligned to that, amen. May we please just stand up and celebrate uh, Pastor G as she comes to help us receive the offering this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Nantlantla. <laughs> Greetings to our parents, whom we love so much. It's a privilege to stand before you and minister the word of God in offering. Amen. Greetings to all the servants of God, the ministers of the word. 
In fact, I'm shaking because yesterday, as the bishop or the prophet was praying, talking about the woman sitting down, God said, you are not where I'm expecting you to be. You've been just relaxing. My heart is with the, 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 the kids. I remember when I was monitoring exams, I prayed. When the learners finished writing, they said, how we wish that we have everyone monitoring exam praying for us. Because when they look at us, we are just afraid of them. Mind you, these kids are writing. In another school, I prayed, even in tongues. And then I heard the, the, the other guy saying, hey, we heard that you, you prayed in that school. Hey, they were so shocked. Because that is what God has called us for. Not to be ashamed of the gospel. Hallelujah. I refuse to be ashamed of the gospel. And when Pastor Masazi was preaching, saying God's heart is with education, the made I, uh, I can't remember the third thing, our entertainment, I was like, Father, please help me to break all the barriers and save the kids for you. I'm happy that my kids are here. Pastor Masego was preaching. In fact, all the position that I got in the Department of Education, I didn't deserve some of them. It happened exactly. I'm not going to say in which position because, wow. And my son was like, mom, those people were wrong. They were so wrong. They were not supposed to do that. But I'm happy that he's, he's got the answer today that they, were, they went wrong. Amen. So what is preached about in this place? It happens. It's not stories. When the word of God is preached, we tend to say like, oh, it's one of the pastor's stories. Up until we receive it, it will remain a story. I refuse to have stories. I want to experience what they are talking about, what they are ministering about. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I'm, I was just passing. Amen. Uh, when I received the, the, the invitation to minister, in my heart, God was like, tell my people to say what I say. But God, this is about offering. And then God said to me, your giving, can you remember your givings? And I said, Lord, yes. How were you giving? It would be like uh, maybe you visit one of our branches and they are doing something in the church while I was preaching without thinking about it. And I will find myself saying, I'm going to give you a 10,000 just to help you with the roofing. And the devil will say, where are you going to get the money? But I've already said it. God is saying, say what I say immediately. Don't wait. Don't wait. Just say it. Amen. We were counseling another couple. And without thinking, I found myself saying, I'm going to give you just money to just have uh, one night at the hotel. Where are you going to get that money? Have you talked to your husband about it? God is saying, just say what I say immediately. Don't wait. Because when you wait, 
you are going to get cool. Kanti, this is, this is burning inside you. And you start to when the show to your Paula, who and then you say, yeah, the devil was after my money. Can't you see Paul? 